Um, very simply, are birthdays pagan? I, I don't think so. I, I, we're talking about a cultural thing. Um, and um, our American culture, we, we celebrate birthdays. And we have birthday parties and we use candles for however many years you are. And uh, uh, it's cultural. And now if somebody's going to go back and chase, well, back in such and such a culture in this country or whatever, this is what they did and it was a, they used false gods. Hey, I got news for all of you guys. Um, almost all people in the world that have existed in the world have been involved with false gods. If you're going to pick out one little thing and say, well, that's pagan and so forth, excuse me, the whole world is corrupted. There is nothing in the world that is holy. So why pick and choose on some little dinky like that when the truth of the matter is the whole world is fouled up and that's the reason why we need to have God come here and restore things and clean the place up. And so there's not, well, if it's a birthday for a granddaughter, it's fine, but a birthday for a guy, that's, that's pagan. <laughs> Forget it. It's, it, spe there. it speaks to a greater issue that we run into across the movement where we have a great deal of brethren who come into a greater knowledge of truth and, and scripture and the th ways of God. And then we have a tendency to then sort of like, well, anything that is either not in the Bible or not of God, then it's pagan. Then I w this is the recommendation I would make to all of my brethren and friends. Why don't you focus in on following God, paying attention to what God says, being like God, following his footsteps, and stop worrying about how you're going to be different from the world. Our course of instruction is not a course of instruction where you say, these are the list of don'ts. Our course of instruction is to pursue God. So if you get focused on that, I think it's going to, you're going to miss the whole thing. Also through experience and the testimony of a lot of brethren, painting the with the broad pagan brush uh, it doesn't really get you anywhere with friends and family and, and trying to, to win others over to I, the I ways of the Lord. I can't think of a better way to disturb a lot of people and destroy your ability to speak good things into their life than by calling what they do pagan. Exactly. Yep. All right. Shalom, shalom. This is your brother of Israel. And first and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Most High, Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakakadash, and that's our Heavenly Father and His beloved Son, uh, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus. Uh, and as you see in, in the opening clip right there, this video that I'm going to profile right here is has to do with birthdays, and it's uh, asking if birthdays are pagan. Yes, birthdays are pagan. For the most part, they are. And um, I'm going to start this lesson, but um, before I even go any further, I'm, I'm just going to go down to the to a few of the comments for the same interview here for the brother. What's his name? Uh, Monte Judah. You know, so I'm, I'm going to read a few of the comments that's on the comment board. Because if you take this in uh, interview here for at face value, <laughs> you will you would feel like they they telling you the right thing. But it's, this guy is going off, man. He's he's going off, leading leading the flock astray. Okay, so the first comment it says, uh, let me open it up right here. It's kind of small, so bear with me. The writing it says, uh, I have a question. You said we should follow the Most High and live like the Messiah and follow his footsteps. But did they celebrate birthdays and because it's a cultural thing, it's okay, you're saying? But the word says, don't follow man-made tradition and blowing and blowing of the candles and cake is a pagan origin. You sound like a modern Christian who justified Christmas when they say, oh well, it was pagan a long time ago and now in America it's a cultural thing not pagan so can you explain the difference between those traditions seem like you're picking worldly traditions you feel is right so it's okay to celebrate halloween easter etc as long as we're in a good spirit that doesn't make any sense and you're worried about losing friends and you're saying to compromise so don't lose friends and family well i tell you this guy's going off it's pure folly 
So let me show you some of the comments on the comment board here before I start. If if you are a friend of this world, you are an enemy of the Most High. So true, so true, sister. Cultures, culture sounds more like men's traditions. There goes another one. Uh, simply just look at the Bible and you can see celebration of birthdays is not encouraged. Why is so? Believers of the Most High are to walk in holiness, yet Lion and Lamb Ministries teachings have gone away. Um, alienating, alienating people, alienating people from holiness, from holiness of the Most High. Rather, I am seeing now you are sending a different message to tickle the ears, not to lose subscribers. Sorry to say, but I am unserving now because your teachings in this particular subject is way towards adhering to the worldly ways. Monte Judah answer is respecting to the culture ways as as where birthday celebration comes from. But did the Bible says says to follow our own cultural practices more than the word of the Most High? I am very surprised. How is man? Monte Judah responded. She said, this man, okay. Okay, this is a fallen world. So it's okay to watch porn too. Wear revealing clothes for women to commit adultery or fornicate and just ask for forgiveness at the end of the day and it will be okay. The Most High hates willful sin. By your words, many will stumble for sure and you are to answer Yahweh. That should be Yahweh. That's the name of the Most High. Yahweh, not Yahuwah. Yahweh, our power for that. I can't see the spirit of the Most High operating in your preaching these days. Rather, you are adhering to your own carnal ways because yourselves, yourselves can't get away from celebrate celebration of birthdays. Know your ministry should make a firm stand by the word of the Most High, not by your own carnal convictions. You should be teaching believers to live, to leave the wickedness of this world. Yet your message was feel good, sugar coated one. <laughs> I tell you, wow, it's crazy. Another one of the common boy, you are leading people astray. Revelations 18 and 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying come out of her my people that ye be not partakers of her sins and that ye receive not of her plagues okay so i could go on and on on and on from the comment board and as you can see a lot of people don't agree with what he was teaching okay because that's folly and we know that's wrong and the scripture says the scripture says woe unto the shepherds that lead the flock astray right so I'm going to I'm going to start this lesson right now. And I'm going to let you guys know that birthday is mentioned in the Bible three times. It's mentioned in Genesis chapter 40 and it's mentioned in Matthew the 14th chapter and it's also mentioned in Mark the 6th chapter. Okay? And um um it's also known as his day. His day. But we're going to start this lesson because we know birthday is not an Israelite tradition, okay? So we don't supposed to do like what the rest of the world do. Okay, so I'm going to give you the first instance in the Bible where birthday is mentioned is in, in uh, Genesis chapter 40. And I'm going to read out the chapter for you that you could see and make light of, um, try to get understanding. Okay, because where every every instance where birthday is mentioned in the Bible, it wasn't a good ending. It was always something very sad, very cruel going on. Okay, so let me read for you Genesis chapter 40 verse 1. And it came to pass after these things that the butler of the king of Egypt and his baker had offended their lord, the king of Egypt, and Pharaoh was wroth against two of his officers, against the chief of the butlers and against the chief of the bakers. And he put them in the ward in the house of the captain of the guard into the prison, the place where Joseph was bound. And the captain of the guard charged Joseph with them and served, and he served them. And they continued a season in the ward. 
and they dream a dream both of them each man his dream in one night each man according to the interpretation of his dream the butler and the baker of the king of Egypt which were which were bound in the prison and Joseph came in unto them in the morning and looked upon them and behold they were sad they were sad and he and he asked Pharaoh's officers that were uh, that were with him in the ward of the Lord's house saying wherefore look ye so sadly today and they said unto him we have dreamed a dream and there is no interpreter of it and Joseph said unto them do not do not interpretation belong to the Most High tell me them I pray you and the chief butler hold on bear me a second here and the chief butler told his dream to Joseph and said to him in my dream behold a vine was before me and in the vine phone you're kind of getting stuck and in the vine were three uh, branches and it was as though it bud and her blossoms shot forth and the clusters thereof brought forth uh, ripe grapes and Pharaoh's cup was in my hand and I took the grapes and pressed them into Pharaoh's cup and I gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand and Joseph said unto him this is the interpretation of it the three branches are three days yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thine head and restore thee unto thy place <clears throat> and thou shalt deliver Pharaoh's cup into his hand the former manner where thou was his butler but think on me but think on me when it shall be well with thee and and show kindness I pray thee unto me and make mention of me unto Pharaoh and bring me out of this house for indeed I was stolen away out of the land of the Hebrews and and here also I have done nothing that they should put me into the dungeon when the chief baker saw that the interpretation was good he said unto Joseph I also was in my dream and behold I had three white baskets on my head and in the uppermost basket there was of, there was of all manner of baked meats for Pharaoh and the birds did eat them out of the basket upon my head and Joseph answered and said this is the interpretation thereof three the three baskets are three days yet within three days shall Pharaoh lift up thy head from off thee and shall hang thee on a tree and the birds shall eat thy flesh from off thee and it came to pass the third day which was Pharaoh's birthday that he that he made a feast unto all his servants and he lifted up the head of the chief butler and of the chief baker among his servants and he restored the chief butler unto his butlership again and he gave the cup into Pharaoh's hand but he hanged the chief baker as Joseph had interpreted to him yet he did not he did not the chief butler remember Joseph but forget him so we see here we see here that um, on Pharaoh's birthday on the Pharaoh's birthday he hanged the chief baker on a tree and that was on the Pharaoh's birthday so we know that's not a good thing that happened on the Pharaoh's birthday and remember the Pharaoh of Egypt the Egypts are Hamites okay they're not Israelites they Hamites so we don't supposed to follow their ways we Israelites we don't supposed to follow the ways of the heathen okay so that's the first mention of birthdays in Bible uh, which uh, Genesis uh, the 48th chapter with the Pharaoh once again remember we don't supposed to follow the ways of the heathen we are Israelites not Hamites okay so we know the, the rulers the rulers of uh, Egypt they, they had ancient Pharaohs okay so the second mention of uh, birthdays in the Bible 
is in the book of Matthew. Okay, so the book of Matthew chapter 14, verse 6. We're going to begin from 6. And we should be going down to verse 12. Okay, so, and it reads, But when Herod's birthday was kept, the daughter of Herodias danced before them and pleased Herod, whereupon he promised with an oath to give her whatsoever she would ask. And she being before instructed of her mother, she said, said, give, give me here John the Baptist's head in a charger. Okay. And the king was sorry, nevertheless, for the oath's sake. And them which sat with him at meat, he, he recommended, he commanded it to be given her. And he sent and beheaded John the Baptist, and beheaded John in the prison. And his head was brought in a charger and given to the damsel. And she brought it, she brought it unto her mother. She brought it to her mother. And his disciples came and took up the body and buried it and went and told Yahawashai, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus. <clears throat> so you see, this is the second notification of birthday in the Bible. You see what happened on Herod's Herod's birthday? And Herod Herod was an Herod was an Herod was an Edomite, right? Because uh uh, I think I did. I, I saved. Um, um, <clears throat> let's get it real quick. Uh, we know uh, Herod was an Edomite from Rome. It's generally accepted that Herod was born around 73 BCE in Idumea. Idumea is Edom. That's where the Caucasians come from, the so called Caucasians, so called white man. Okay? Herod was uh, the king of Judea. He was the king of Judea. But he's from Idumea. His father was an Edomite. Reading on, let's go from here again. Um, Herod's father was by descent an Edomite, okay, whose ancestors had converted to Judaism. Herod was raised as a Jew. So, like I say, we are Israelites. We don't supposed to follow the ways of the other nations okay this is where we go wrong most of the time thinking that everything what people do we supposed to do because they keep in birthdays we supposed to keep birthdays but that's where we're going off okay the laws wasn't given to everybody the laws were given to the israelites okay so the scripture say the most i say therefore he'll punish us because we are the people who have the laws okay the laws were given to us the israelites okay so that's the second uh, mention of birthday in the Bible. Now, the third mention of birthday in the Bible is actually uh, the book of Mark, but it's, it's actually speaking about the same, the same uh, Herod. So we don't, we don't have to read that because it's just, it's in Genesis, it's in Matthew, and it's in Mark. But Mark and Matthew are speaking about Herod, the same story. Okay, so that's that. All right, so now let me tell you about another story in the Bible. This is Job. This is the Most High, one of the Most High righteous servant. Okay, Job was one of the most righteous man on the planet. Job, the Most High servant. Okay, so let's let's read Job. We're gonna read Job chapter one, verse four and five. Okay. But this is a story about Job and his sons, okay? And this is how you know in ancient times, they, they, they used to call the Bible, make, make note of birthdays, those three times in the Bible. But it usually says his day. So it's, it's known as his day. That's the ancient term of birthday, his day, your born day. Okay, so um, let's read Job chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. And his sons went and his sons went and feasted in their house, every one his day, you see, his day, and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and drink with them. Verse 5, 
And it was so when the days of their feasting were gone about that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons my sons have sinned and cursed the Most High in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. So you see, Job said his sons, his sons may have, may have cursed the Most High in their hearts, or they may have sinned. So, and Job was a righteous man. He he was a, he was a servant. He was a servant of the Most High. A very righteous man. You could read the book of Job. Read, I, 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 I'm telling you, read the book of Job and you would know who Job was. He was a very righteous man. Okay, so we're going to jump down. We're going to jump down to verse uh, 13 to 23. We're going to jump down to verse 13 to 23. Okay, continuing on. And there was a day, and there was a day, when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them. And the asses feeding beside them. Whoa, I hope this amp is not closing up. Um, no, I'm not closing up the amp. Uh, uh, bear with me a second, yes. I hope the amp is not closing out. Okay, if it close out, I'll be back a second when it bear me a second here. It's am like it's gonna freeze up. Okay. Okay. We're gonna finish up uh from uh where where am I? Job Okay. The amp had freezed up, so we're going to just continue. Okay, verse 13. Job 1 and 13. And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them. And there came a messenger unto Job saying, Okay, I read it already. And the, and, the, and the Sabaeans fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword. And only I, and only, and I, only am escaped alone to tell thee. And while he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of the Most High is fallen from heaven and have burnt up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. And I... Only I'm escape alone to tell thee. Verse 17. While he was yet speaking, of speaking, there came also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels and have carried them away, yea, and slain the serpents with the edge of the sword. And I only am escape alone to tell thee. While he was yet speaking, there came also another and said, Thy sons and daughters and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and they are dead. And I only am escaped alone to tell thee. Then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. And said, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and, and naked shall I return. Thither, thither, the Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this Job sinned not, nor charged the Most High foolishly. Now can you imagine that? While you're getting all of this bad news, Another person coming to tell you another story. Another person, you have like four or five people coming to tell you pure sad things was happening. And Job, and Job, and all this, Job sinned not, nor charged the Most High fully. This man was a very righteous man. Okay, 
Very, very righteous man. Okay, now the point I'm trying to make here, we're gonna go to um we're gonna go to um chapter three. We're gonna go to chapter three to get it. Okay. So after all that, after after all that that happened to Job, see what Job did right here? Job chapter three verse one. After this opened Job his mouth and cursed his day. What he did? He cursed his day. Okay, remember your day is your, your born day. And Job spake and said, Let the day perish wherein I was born, and the night in which it was said, There is a man child conceived. Let the day be darkness, let the let the most high regard it from above, neither let the light shine upon it. So you see, I don't need, I don't it is it's the whole verse chapter. I, I don't have to go down any further with that. You, as you can see, he cursed his birthday. And Job is a righteous man. Okay? Job is a righteous man. He knows the Most High is not dealing with, with self-glorification. So, you, birthdays is more like self-glorification. It's okay? And I mean, it's okay to give thanks and praise to the Most High for another season, another day. But when you take it upon yourself to, with all the, the candles and cake and the wishings and all the different things... Certain type of things. Certain things go back to paganism. Okay, so I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna give you a next, a next one. I'm gonna give you a next one, and this will be. Uh, Jeremiah chapter twenty, verse fourteen. This is Jeremiah, another one of the prophets. Cursed be the day wherein I was born. Let not the day wherein my mother bare me be blessed. Verse 15. Cursed be the man who brought tidings to my father, saying, A man child is born unto thee, making him very glad. So you see, it's all through the scriptures. It's all through the scriptures that we, Israelites, we don't supposed to celebrate. We don't supposed to celebrate birthdays. So, contrary to popular beliefs, that's not our tradition nor our custom. Okay? That's not our tradition nor our customs. Okay? We don't supposed to do everything the other nations do. We don't supposed to do it. Okay? Because we, we supposed to be a set apart people. We don't supposed to do everything the other nations do. So... Go with me to uh, Jeremiah chapter 10. Chapter 10. And we're going to read 1 and 2. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heaven are dismayed at them. For the heathens... For the heathen are dismayed at them. So you see, we not we not we not we not supposed to follow the ways of the other nations or the heathen nations. We don't supposed to do that. That's not an Israelite custom. Okay, we don't supposed to do that. Okay, that's 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 not of us. We we don't supposed to follow those ways. Okay, we we suppose Israelites Israelites are a holy people, a set apart people. Okay. We just need to know ourselves, and once we know ourselves, and know what we're supposed to be doing, and then, yeah, you understand? You would know what time of day it is. Yeah. So, let me let me. We we supposed to we supposed to be like the Lord. We supposed to strive to be perfect in all His ways. We supposed to walk in His ways. Okay. So, this is First Kings three and twelve. And I said, Behold, I have done according to thy words. No, this is this is not the one. This is not the one I want. This is not the one I want. Let me let me get hold on. Bear with me. The first Kings. First Kings three and fourteen. Three and fourteen. First Kings three and fourteen. 
There we go. And if thou wilt walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments as thy father David did, then I will lengthen thy days. So you see, we supposed to we supposed to strive to be to walk perfect in the Lord's ways. Okay? And we know say there's no record of the most high uh, 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 of our Lord and Savior uh, birth born day in, in, in scriptures. We know that. Okay? And we're supposed to strive to be like him. So we never see him celebrate a birthday. Right? We never see him celebrate a birthday. So follow me here to Deuteronomy 8 verse 6. And it says, Therefore, Thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy power to walk in all his ways, to walk in his ways and to fear him. You see? You see? We're supposed to walk in his ways. Deuteronomy chapter 11 verse 22. Verse 22. For if ye shall dig diligently keep all these commandments which I command you, to do them, to love the Lord, your power, to walk in all his ways, and to cleave unto him. Okay? It's just some, some scriptures I'm giving you. So you can see, you're supposed to walk in the most high ways. Okay? You're supposed to walk in the most high ways. Okay? Okay, First Kings 8. First King 8 and 58. That he may incline our hearts unto him to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, which he commanded our fathers, okay? Which he commanded our fathers. So you see, we have certain things that are required of us, you know, required of us, you know? The law, statutes, and commandments, those things are required of us. We're supposed to, we're supposed to adhere and hearken unto them. You know what I'm saying? So let's go to Jeremiah 7 and 23. Jeremiah 7 and 23. But this thing commanded I, I this thing I commanded I them, saying, Obey my voice and I will be your, your power, and ye shall be my people, and walk ye in all the ways that I have commanded you, that it may be well unto you. You see? That it may be well unto you. You got that? All right, let me give you let me give you one more 22 Joshua 22 and verse 5 But take diligent heed to do the commandment and the law which Moses the servant of the the servant of the Lord charge you to love the Lord your power and to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and to do cleave unto him and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul so you see we we don't supposed to follow the ways of the heathen okay Israelites don't supposed to follow the ways of the heathen okay because we are set apart people Okay, so that's what gets us in trouble the majority of the time for keeping, for following the ways of the heathen, keeping birthdays and different stuff like that. And we're not, I'm not telling you that when your day come around that you can't, you're supposed to basically give thanks and praise to your father. Okay? Give thanks and praise to your father. But all the self-glorification, the Most High is not working with. The Most High is not working with the proud. A proud spirit. Most I don't like proud spirit, proudness. Okay? So um let me go to let me tell you. Let me let me make a clarification right here too. Let's go let's go to the book of Romans and show you why Israelites don't supposed to follow the ways of the heathens. Because the law was given to us. It wasn't given to everybody. It was given to us. Okay, so Romans nine and four. Romans 9 and 4. Who are the Israelites to whom pertaineth the adoption and the glory and the covenants and the giving of the law and the service of the Most High and the promises 
You understand? So we, as Israelites, we are we are different set of people. We are we we holy. We holy means separate. We are set apart people. So we're not supposed to follow the ways of the other nations. We're supposed to be a beacon light unto the other nations. Okay. Yes. So let me go now to the book of Deuteronomy, chapter seven and verse six. Chapter seven and verse six. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy power. The Lord thy power hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above ab, above all people that are upon that are upon the face of the earth. You see? Let me read that again for you. Let me read it again. Deuteronomy chapter seven verse six. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy power the Lord thy power. The Lord thy power hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are on that upon that are on the upon the face of the earth. So you see, as I was saying again, we are a special set of people, a set apart people, Israelites. We don't supposed to follow the ways of the um the other nations. Okay, let me take you now to uh uh let me take you to uh, Psalms. Psalms uh, 147, 147 and 19. Here we go again. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgment unto Israel. You see? He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statue and his judgments unto Israel. So you see? We as Israelites, we don't supposed to do, we don't supposed to do everything we see other people do. You understand? So I'm saying, by no means that when you're when you're born they come around, that you not supposed to um, give thanks and praise. You're supposed to give thanks and praise. Absolutely. You're supposed to give thanks and praise. That's what you're supposed to do. Give thanks and praise. To your creator who create you. Okay, you don't you don't wake up yourself. The most high does that. That's the power of the most high that gets you up and rise you up in the morning. So you're supposed to give thanks and praise to the most high. But as far as the celebration with the cake and the candles and the lighting of the candles and all that other stuff, that go back that go back to page to paganism. Okay? So the most high is not working with that. That's not an Israelite custom. It's not. It's not an Israelite custom. So, what I want to know, what I want to know is how how be it that um we 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 um we you have people that's in the church for like 25, 30 years and they don't know they're not supposed to celebrate birthdays. So I'm like, you know, it's like like the scriptures say, woe woe unto the woe unto the to the to the to the shepherds that lead the flock astray. Okay, it's like. How do you be in the church so long and, and 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 not know these stuff? It's like, what are they doing? What are they talking about? It's like you go to church and it's always like a concert. They sing, they sing you playing songs, singing and dancing, but it, not enough scriptures are coming out. So, it's 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 man. <laughs> but uh, let me let me let me. I'm gonna go to, I'm gonna go to Acts. Acts chapter seven. And uh, uh verse 48 let's go to verse 48 let's go to verse 48 because I'll bring out some scriptures here Acts chapter 7 verse 48 and it says how be it the most high dwelleth not in temples made with hands as said the prophet how be it the most high dwelleth not in temples made with hands as said the prophets so you see, I don't know what people be learning in, in, in church, man, but <laughs> trust me, I wouldn't waste my time. I wouldn't waste my time. I, I would much rather read the Bible for myself. Okay? I would much rather read the, the scriptures for myself. Uh, okay, let's go to the, let's go to, um, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. 
chapter 3 and 9. I just told you the most high dwelleth not in temples made with hands, right? Okay, this chapter, this first Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 9. For we are laborers together with the most high. Ye are the most high's husbandry. Ye are ye are the most high's building. Okay? The church is within us. We are the most high's building. See? For we are laborers together with the most high. Ye are the most high's husbandry. Ye are the most high's building. Okay? Let's jump down to verse 16. Know ye not that ye are the temple of the most high, and that the spirit of the most high dwelt in you? Know ye not that ye are the temple of the most high, and that the mo and the spirit of the most high dwelleth in you? Okay? So, like I say, you have people be going to these churches and stuff for a very long time, for years in and years out. And a lot of things they don't know. It's simple as a birthday, they don't know that you don't supposed to celebrate birthdays. This it's like self glorification. And I say by like I say, by no means that you don't supposed to acknowledge or what you're supposed to do is just give thanks and praise. Give thanks and praise for a new day, a new season. You know what I mean? You just give thanks. Let all the glory be to the most high. Because he's will wake you up in the morning time. Okay? The scripture says in Hosea 4 and 6, my, my people, as a matter of fact, let me just get it for you. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Okay? Because we reject knowledge. I'll, I'll, I'll pull it up for you. Um, Hosea. Okay, here we go. Hosea 4. And six, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou has seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy power. I will also forget thy children. So you see, the most high is saying it plain and clear. Our people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. You know, when you don't when you don't have knowledge, you don't know a lot of things. You know, so we need we need to start, you know, paying more close attention to these scriptures. I'm saying so right now I'm going to Proverbs one and um twenty two. How long ye simple ones will ye love simplicity and the scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge? You see? We gotta get knowledge. The reason why we don't know these things is because we're not reading. We, like I say, we go into the church and they're always basically having a concert. It's like singing all the time, but they're not really bringing out enough scriptures. You know, that's why it's best for you to read for yourself. You know what I'm saying? You got to you gotta read for yourself, okay? Let's go to Revelation. Let's go to Revelation, um, Revelation 1. And, um, hold on. Um... Revelation 1 and um, 3. Revelation 1 and 3. Blessed is the man that readeth, and they that hear the words of his prophecy. Okay? Blessed is the man that readeth. That's my point here. So you could always go back and see the scripture. Uh, let's go to, um, for time's sake here, let's go to... Um, Let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah. Let's go to Isaiah 34. 34 and verse 16. 34 and verse 16. 34 and verse 16. And it reads, Seek ye out of the book of of the Lord and read no one of these shall fail okay talking about the prophecies in this book none of them shall fail all of them shall come to pass the Bible the, the book is the living book it's very well alive okay this book is very well alive seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read 
no one of these shall fail okay so I think I'm gonna read about two more I'm gonna read about two more so people need to know let me uh, go to the book of John the book of John because people need to know if you sinning and you constantly sinning you, it's, the scriptures say to um, be careful to keep adding sin upon sin willful uh, willful sinning willfully sinning you know what I'm saying so let me tell you so because most people keep on birthdays and, and they don't really know they don't know that they're kind of like going off because it's not a, it's not an Israelite it's not an Israelite custom. That's not in the law for us to keep birthdays. Okay, so it's like it's like you kind of like you kind of going off there, you know. So where is this now? I hope this thing doesn't freeze up here. Okay, thirty one. Okay, now we know that the Mosai heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of the Mosai, he doeth. Ah, uh, <laughs> figure that was coming. <laughs> Let's go back to it. We're gonna get right back to it. Let's get right back to it. As a matter of fact, I'll just get it from here. What we was in uh, John. Go to John. John chapter 9 and 31. John 9 and 31. Now we know that the Most High heareth not sinners, but if any man be a worshiper of the Most High and doeth his will, him he heareth. Okay? So, we need to be doing the will of the Most High. That's the only way he's going to hear our prayers. You know what I mean? So we can't be going off. We can't be going off and doing things that, that are not our custom. So we know that birthdays is not an Israelite custom. Our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai, he never kept birthdays. There is no recording in the scripture that he kept birthdays. And we're supposed to walk in all of his ways. So we're not supposed to keep so-called birthdays, celebrations, Okay, so I'm going to leave you with this last one right here. Let's go into the book of um, the book of Matthew. So I would say, like I say, the Most High hear it not sinners prior, as 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 you just seen heard the scripture just came out. Okay, let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter six, verse five to seven. And when, and when thou prayest, thou shalt know, again, and when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to the Pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seed in secret shall reward thee openly. Okay? And here is the point. Verse 7. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do. Okay? We don't supposed to do things what the heathen do. Okay? For they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. So you see? Israelites don't supposed to do what other nations do or the or what the heathens do. So as we say, birthdays, birthday celebrations, that's 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 of a, that's of the heathen. That's not an Israelite custom. That's not Israelite heritage. So on um, that's it for that. I I hope I hope you guys were edified. I really hope you guys were edified and um Lord willing, I'll see you on the next video. All praises to the Most High. Yahweh, Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai.